Hello, I'm back again to more infos about controllers and Bitwig. I got several questions about bearing controllers and I finally have one here. So I have this nice little X-Touch 1 here in the house. And if you're familiar with some bearing uh, mixing desks, the size is quite similar to the smaller mixing desks. Also the build quality is pretty nice. Plastic on the sides, but metal in the middle. And it also got a nice touch here. You get two USB ports as well. So you have a little hub included. So you can attach a keyboard or a mouse or whatever you want to extend. So pretty handy if you're on the go, just have maybe one USB port on your laptop so you can have more stuff here. And we also have a foot switch adapter. So you can also, for example, start the playback with the foot switch. So, and when you boot up, you shortly, quickly have seen the version number of the firmware of the device. It's 107 and you should make sure that your device has exactly that version and not the old 104, which also came with my controller. You can download the latest version from the Bearing uh, website and there is also an introduction how to update this. This is necessary because with the old version, it will behave very weird with the protocol and with Bitwig. So, let's Let's jump into it. In the latest release of Driven by Moss 7.40, we get now full support here for this little device, which means also the automatic lookup should work. If not, you can grab manually here the Mackie control, somewhere here, the Mackie control here, MCU, just pick that one. But normally it should get detected nicely, like here, and you can just click here on add and you get the notification. Okay, great, it's working, and you see. Uh, all the information here. Next thing you should do, you see it already came up, but we can fine tune that a bit because you have a lot of different options for the different Mackie control controllers that are on the market. There are also other introduction videos to that if you want to watch these as well on my channel. So you can select now a profile for the bearing uh, X-Touch 1 is also now in the profiles list and it gets some fine tuning. For example, there is no second display, which is only a thing with the icon control us. And for example, you should have here enabled the to display track names because otherwise it will just be a duplication of the assignment display and you have no idea which tracks are. Okay, so let's jump into what you can do with that device. You see it already came up and let's start simple here with the transport area. You can press on play as you expected and you can start here the playback, stop it. And if you press it again, go to the beginning. Also recording here can start and you can start start to record into a ranger navigate here into your arranger view and can also use here the big wheel for scrolling in your project left to the wheel you have also the navigation so you can here move let's go maybe to the clips so that we can see it best for example if you go here into the clip area you can use here the navigation keys to navigate into that area as well and if you press a knob here you can use a zoom function let's close that one down here again so you can zoom also in your project and also toggle here between the larger and the smaller track height. Now something to mention is here how does it work with tracks because normally the Mackie controller MCU protocol requires or uses eight tracks but on that one we have only one. So Behringer came up with a quite interesting solution to that which works nicely. So you also see on the device in air quotes eight tracks but you can switch them. What does it mean? So for example, if I use here the channel button, you see I can move here in the tracks, but if I go to the eighth track, then it stops. You cannot navigate to the ninth ones because you're on the first page of eight tracks. So to get to the ninth, you just need to switch the bank. So then you go to the ninth till the 18th track. And then again, you can switch between these tracks, but you cannot go back to the eighth. So you need to use the fader bank again to go back to that. Let's start now on the top. You have here the transport information where you are and you can toggle also between BPM and time. So this is now the ticks display. And if you toggle that, you will see now the tempo of the project. It's 120 beats 
per minute. And you can mute track, you can solo the track, not very surprising, and you can toggle the recording state as well. You can jump here to the master track to change that as well. Below that we have function keys. These function keys are fully assignable. So if you go here, let's stop that. If you go here into the settings, you see you have here the assignable knobs only to five because the sixth is assigned, if I remember correctly, is always assigned to punch in. Yeah, exactly. So it's punch in, but the other five buttons can be assigned to anything you like. For example, create a new clip or change the layout, add tracks, stuff like this, quantize, so the stuff you normally would be interested in. Something I forgot to mention is the device comes with a lot of different templates which you can stick on it, but with Bitwig now it works with the very stuff out of the box. You don't have to put an ugly overlay on it, so that's pretty handy. So it works with a normal Mackie mode. The device is pre-configured, but what I suggest that you do is to switch that to the user Mackie mode they have. You do that like this. If you keep the stop button pressed and click here on that one, you can select here the mode. And as you see, I already changed to the user mode. So it comes in the beginning with a standard protocol, but you can switch here. Hope you see that to the user. Where is the user? User, user, here to the user mode. What is the difference to the user mode? It's in the user mode, you can change also the assignment to those knobs. So if you want to do them something different, just go up on the wiki, the documentation about my MCU implementation, and you can switch to other functions. Simply keep the knob pressed, and then you can assign here, again here with a knob assigned to a different function. And that's the only knob I changed because it does not do anything meaningful here with my implementation. So I changed it to flip and flip switches between the normal audio and instrument tracks and the effect track. So this is pretty handy for editing. And you can, as I said, toggle the bank here with that one. So you see we are now on the effects tracks. Let's check where is the effect here. Here is the delay. So we see the delay track and you can also go back to the other tracks as well. So what else do we have? We have these, these, these. So here you can have the marker mode. So we also support markers. This LED is a little bit strange. Strange, I think when I press it, you see we're in the marker mode, but it does not light. It lit, it seems to be when there is a marker present. So let's add here a marker. Uh, marker, 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 marker. Insert a Q marker. Let's also add another one. Also, maybe give that a more meaningful name. Let's say here, no idea, chorus. And this here is the verse. So let's see that. You see now you have here verse and with the channel you can also switch markers and say chorus. And what you then can do, you can press the knob here and it will start the playback from that marker. Go here to the first one and we start playback here from the other marker as well. And as you see now, the marker is lit and it does not mean that the, you are in that mode. It means there are markers present. So if I leave the marker mode, it's still lit. So this might be a bit confusing, but always look up there in which mode you are and there you see just there are markers present. Next one notch is for tapping the tempo. So you can tap here a new tempo. Cycle is toggle here the repeat. Drop I said already we change here the bank between effect track and normal ones. A replace is just here the override mode and click is the metronome toggling and solo disables or enables the groove function. There are more modes here hidden but they are not all that meaningful with that one channel fader device. So let's go through them. You have the normal panorama mode. So in a normal panorama mode, you can change the volume. And here, if you touch it, you also see here the volume up here. And it changes also in the volume mode when you touch it. And if you're in a panorama mode, you can change here the panorama of the track. And there are more modes. So this was this volume mode. There also now the volume can be changed up here. And the track mode does not make too much sense with that device because you have on a different eight faders normally you have here your volume panorama and the sense but here with that device you also have volume so it's actually on that device the same mode as the volume mode but we have a device mode which is interesting so if you go to a device maybe let's go here to the device and if you are in a device mode you can also move here between the different parameters so it's 
again banked with eight and you can have here you see i only have two parameters here mapped so the frequency and the resonance and you can change that here as well so these are the two meaningful modes basically the device mode and the panorama mode which makes sense with that one channel device so i think pretty nice and powerful device to maybe take also on the road with you have it in your bag together with your laptop and it allows you to control most of the functions of Bitwig and yeah if you have it like it use it make some funky music